Shalom Chavrim, I'm Steve Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live, and I do not have good news, friends. Uh, it is obvious that uh, very serious issues are on the horizon between the United States and Russia. Um, and uh, the latest news that I have coming out right now, this is on DVIDS, Defense Visual Information Distribution Service, uh, has reported the U.S. has deployed the THAAD anti-missile system in first deployment to Romania. Uh, if you recall, we have covered a numerous uh, troop movement to the country of Romania. Uh, to give you a bird's eye view there, if you're looking on the screen and behind you here, uh, we can see Romania there just uh, south of Ukraine. It borders Ukraine. Uh, Moldova is also right there in the middle and between the two countries here. Uh, you can see there, but also on the southern part of Ukraine connects to Romania. And so it, it, it looks like to me that there's a good possibility that what, uh, uh, what the United States is looking at is a way to, are, are preparing for a possible ground invasion into Ukraine uh, to take back the eastern part, uh, or even possibly a direct conflict with Russia. There's a lot of things going on that could certainly make all that a very realistic possibility. And uh, so let me just kind of give you a few, or show you a few things as well, though. Uh, besides the fact that in Turkey, we did have our missiles there, uh, nuclear missiles in Turkey. But when the staged coup happened, uh, the United States moved uh, some of those nuclear missiles to Romania at that time. We've also moved a tremendous amount of troops there. And that has just put the United States at a closer striking distance to Moscow and St. Petersburg uh, as well. We've talked about uh, here in the United States of moving uh, more uh, troops and weapons to Poland. Again, getting closer to the border of Russia. Belarus as well, who is a, has been a historic uh, ally of Russia. But that, even that relationship is faltering. And, uh, and then on top of all of this, besides us moving the THAAD system there, Putin has announced today that he is submitting a bill on the suspension of the INF Treaty with the United States. Now that's just on the heels of the U.S. doing the same thing. Back in February, if you remember, President Trump, he pulled out of the INF Treaty there, uh, stating that Moscow had actually violated the treaty with the, uh, the, the, the testing of the Eichlander M missile, the 9M729 missile. Uh, and that's the reason why the U.S. came out of the treaty. Now Putin has submitted this before his own parliament to be able to pull out of the treaty, uh, but with the discretion that he can go back into the treaty at his own say-so. Um, and, of course, I believe this is just more so, uh, it's more of a political move on Putin's part to show that uh, Russia has tried to be cooperative with the United States, but unfortunately it's just not happened through the Trump administration. And, and, and granted, I, this is one time I kind of have to take up for President Trump. I don't take up for him very often, but it seems to me that he has tried on multiple occasions to establish a relationship with President Putin, but has always been... Uh, uh, blindsided by those in his own administration as well as the deep state itself, those that want these wars that are going on in the Middle East there. So uh, it's a sad day for both uh, presidents. And, uh, and and I'll just tell you too that um, uh, I, I uh, had a very interesting conversation uh, not too long ago. I can't disclose most of that conversation, but I will say this here, that it was told to me that Putin um, is uh, was hoping that maybe he could do a working relationship with President uh, Trump, but he knew that President Trump did not exercise real power. Uh, we're talking about um, information that was shared uh, with me from uh, someone that knows President Putin personally. Uh, so this is what we're looking at right here, and it's also was a shocking revelation from what I can see as well that Putin uh, doesn't believe that Trump has the power as president that probably most Americans thinks he has. Uh, but you know, even Trump's own admission when he said he was trying to pull the troops out of Syria, but the deep state wouldn't let him. Well, that should let you know right there, he does not have power. He's only a figurehead. You vote someone in you think has power, they have no power. Uh, so 
that's a, that's a problem. And, uh, you know, Russia, it seems that Putin has far more power as the president of Russia by far than what President Trump has here in the United States. So they say that Trump is the most powerful man in the world. He's not, plain and simple. I guess in that regards, Eric Putin is more powerful than Trump. Uh, at least as far as in his country. But both men have made alliances with uh, uh, some of those of the radical Talmudist side and the deep state there, uh, the Chabad organization. And they both pull the strings in both countries as well, which also helps uh, for, or is one of the major causes of why we are in the wars in the Middle East and why we are at odds uh, with one another over Ukraine, over Venezuela, etc. So none of it's good. Also, too, our good friend Lorenzo here uh, from Italy on Already Happened, uh, he was sharing with us uh, the THAAD system being moved. Uh, he's also uh, shared Amichai Stein's uh, report. Bolton says evidence of Iran being behind the UAE tanker blast will be presented at the UN Security Council as early as next week. Uh, we have Trump saying as well that if uh, the U.S. Uh, will respond with military force, if its interests are attacked by Iran. Um, so they're setting the stage up also to go with, to war with Iran. And, uh, and of course, with that being on, on the heels right now, that's being reported here by Reuters. Uh, we've also got another situation, too, and this is right now going on in uh uh, there has been negotiations between Turkey and with Russia to reach a ceasefire in Idlib, uh, according to the defense minister. Now, the, uh, the Russian defense minister, that is, but uh, I, I hate to break it to you guys, those talks have failed. Uh, Russia, Turkey, the Turkish government was uh, demanding that the Syrian Tiger forces pull back and uh, back into the safety zone, and Russia refused to concede to the Turkish government. Uh, I've stated this over and over and over. I'll state it once again. Uh, never did, uh, did uh, Turkey have Russia's uh, interests at heart from the very beginning of the coup that happened, the Maidan coup. And uh, it's all been a game. It's been a scenario. It was only to get Turkish troops inside of Syria. Uh, the deep state definitely wants to take down Syria. Uh, I know personally from uh, contacts in the Israeli uh, intelligence that, uh, that, that Damascus is definitely on the chopping block. And it appears to me that, of course, Russia, excuse me, not Russia, but the United States and uh, the European Union are going to push to take down Damascus. That may be the straw that breaks the camel's back for Russia. Uh, because uh, President Putin has really tried de uh, desperately to defend um, the Syrian people. And I know I've, there's some, been thoughts I've had myself as far as his agenda, uh, but uh, you know some of the information I had received uh, regarding uh, President Putin here uh, just recently, uh, and, and I cannot disclose that information specifically, but I can tell you, that Putin, uh, although he is, you know, he believes his way as well, but he may not be quite the bad guy that uh, some think he is. I'll just leave it at that. And, uh, uh, you know, but anyway, let's, let's continue on. Like I said, we've got here, the Turkish minister said that ex expects Moscow to use its influence on Damascus to stop the ongoing Syrian Arab army military operation around Idlib. He also stressed that Ankara will continue its de-escalation efforts in Idlib within the framework agreements made in uh, Astana process and Sochi conference. Again, that, uh, that uh, talks have collapsed. Uh, also to uh, a friend on our Facebook uh, page had sent me this, uh, and I forget who it was, I apologize, but just wanna thank you for it. ABC News for the second day in a row, U.S. military jets intercept Russian bombers off of Alaska. And uh, uh, it, it's tense, guys. It's very tense. Uh, I am trying to get caught up on a lot of these things that are going on. Uh, also, this is, uh, this is actually NATO, uh, NATO forces inside of Ukraine. Uh, yes, they are there. Uh, personnel from the NATO Defense Education Enhancement Program yesterday visited the uh, uh, Mykolaiv 
NCO Training Center, where some members of the uh, OP Unifier work with international partners to support training for the security forces of Ukraine. Uh, so again, very active participation. A lot more is going on, guys, than what I'm showing you right now. I, I am working on that. We've been dealing majorly with the situation with uh, uh, this upcoming meeting in, uh, in uh, South America and Colombia. Uh, and, and this really, really uh, serious situation of trying to force Christians underneath Judaism, underneath rabbinical teachers in Israel today, uh, that this is what the true remnant are. And that's it's, it's, it's a trouble for me because it is a rejection of the true leadership of Yeshua, that he is the Messiah, and uh, we're going to find that that's going to be taken down. They're preparing for a new world order, and militarily, in a much greater way, once they can destroy the nations uh, and destroy nationalism, they want to destroy Russia, they want to destroy the United States, uh, they're going to have, have us destroy each other, is what they're going to do, unless Christians wake up. And maybe that's something that our, our Christian friends in America and our Christian friends in Russia really need to come together as believers and say, look, we have something in common. Both our nations, Russia was a Christian nation before the Bolsheviks overtook it, and they put Jesuits in there to run the nation and bring about communism. Russia did a great job in trying to win souls to Christ down in the Middle East, or excuse me, the Far East, in China, and places like that. But they didn't want this faith of Christ to prosper in Russia. Same thing in the United States. There is a supplanting of the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ, and it's being the infiltration is at an unprecedented level. And of course, what are they trying to do as well when we look at all these wars and different things at odds? They, they, they're putting all their laws, whether it be the Noahide laws, whatever it might be, they're, always, they're, they're putting those under education. Same thing that happened in the state of Florida when the governor of the state of Florida signed his anti-Semitism law. It wasn't about uh, hatred towards the Jewish people. It was about silencing those that speak against the crimes of the state of Israel. You know, there's a lot of good Jewish people. There's a lot of good Jewish people that don't want the wars that are going on, and they don't want any part of it. In fact, the Jewish people are the ones that expose these things that are happening. But unfortunately, just like it is here in the United States, there is a deep state in Israel as well, and unfortunately it's a very uh, uh, extreme Talmudic uh, leaders that are pulling the strings inside of the Knesset, uh, Netanyahu is sold out to it. That's why we see all the evils that go on. And by the way, did you did you know that the first uh, gay uh, uh, the first gay rabbi that ever was that was ever uh, how would you put it call it sworn in or become a rabbi was done in Israel. Uh, things that you know. Listen. I'm not against the, the people that, that have chosen this way of life as far as them personally. You know, that's not my point here when I say that. My point is, is to tell you the truth. And my point is, too, because we have people of all walks, walks of life. We have Muslims that listen to this broadcast. We have Jews that listen to this broadcast. We have Christians that listen to this broadcast. And, of course, and amongst them, they have different factions of their own as well. I'm here to say we need to love our neighbor as ourself. And I'm here to say also, as I brought up and I didn't finish the process of this statement here when it comes to Russia and the United States, the Christians of these countries should get together and demand that we don't go to war with one another. We've got to stop this cycle of violence that's being pushed in the background to create a new world order. That's why they slip all these things in the education bill. Same thing with Florida. Florida put this anti-Semitism in the education bill to silence the students in colleges and universities, those that are outspoken, and also to re-educate the people. Same thing about the Noahide laws. It's being placed into the education sector here. Why? They know. Destroy the nation. You've got to re-educate the people. Well, what do you know? Then you can really begin to crack down. As believers in Israel have told me that once they go to war with Iran and Israel ends up being attacked and we take they take a severe loss in Israel, that this is when the 
ultra-Orthodox community will come against the believers and they will be persecuted like never before. Don't forget the words of Jesus when he said, they will drag you into the synagogues and they will persecute. If they did it to me, they'll do it to you. He didn't say they're going to drag you into the church or the courthouse. They're going to drag you into the synagogues. Think about it. Let that soak for just a little bit. Don't forget it. Anyway, uh, I'm Steve Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Uh, we, of course, we're live today. Um, and I know some of you had some trouble with the video that Yana did with uh, Deanne Loper. Uh, I will be loading that video up later this evening on Yana's channel called Rise Up Children of God. And once I get it uploaded, uh, I'll drop back and I'll place the link in the description on this news broadcast. But it'll be later this evening, so please keep that in mind. And also, uh, we ask thank you for your support in helping uh, us to stay on the air as you do. Uh, we are looking some more alternative options as well, once again, to try to get the, the, the message out to you guys as well. I'm Steve Benoom. Shalom, shalom.